Hi, I'm Chris Littlefield, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process to invite, design, and facilitate a simple two to three hour virtual or in-person team retreat. I'm going to leave you with a downloadable form that's going to make your planning easy, and I'm going to show you how to do all of your preparation in under one hour. If we haven't met before, I'm Chris Littlefield. I'm an international TEDx speaker specializing in employee appreciation, recognition, and workplace culture, and the founder of Beyond Thank You. I'm a regular contributor to Harvard Business View, to Forbes, and I'm the author of the book 75 Team Activities Remote Teams. Now, over the last couple years alone, I've ran over 80 plus mostly virtual and also in-person programs. Anything from a 400 person training for the World Health Organization down to a 15 person team retreat for a financial organization based in Virginia here in the United States. I know what goes into making these programs happen. And what I notice is that leaders who want to be able to run a retreat for their team often get overwhelmed with the idea of bringing everyone together. And this is largely based on the thought that, oh my God, I need to go get a venue. I need to get catering. I need to align schedulings. I need to know what we're going to talk about, what we're going to do. And so the overwhelm that goes into planning often keeps them from doing and setting up the very retreat that their team needs to have. Now, in my past, I used to run programs for Outward Bound, Project Adventure, these full day offsite retreats where people go into ropes courses and kayaking and all the rest to be able to work better together as a team. Many people thought that the relationships were built when people were up in the trees, when they were doing trust falls together. But in reality, where the relationships were built is that people were spending time getting to know each other as people outside the context of work. They weren't talking about the work, they were taking time to talk about how they were working together and getting to know each other's people. And we don't need a ropes course to be able to do that. We just need a couple questions and some carved out time to do so. So in this video, I'm going to outline all the steps and everything you need to organize a simple two, maximum three hour retreat that you either run virtually or in person with your team. Let's get started. Step one, simply put it on your calendar. Take one of those existing team meetings, maybe it's a bi-weekly or monthly meeting that you have with your team. If it's only one hour, make it two hours just to make sure you have enough time and then change the title of that meeting to team retreat. And that's all you need to do to put it on your calendar. Now, if you're meeting virtually, you already have your venue. It's Zoom, Teams, or whatever platform you use. And if it's in person, just pick a conference from somebody's office or meet in a local park or in some common in space at your office. Don't overthink it. Just put it on the calendar to make sure that you're going to make it happen. Step two is setting the intention for the retreat you'll be planning. This is as easy as finishing the sentence. The intention of the retreat is and then finish that. You can fill in whatever you want to fill in in the end. Some options may be step back and reflect as a team, have fun together, get to know each other better, talk about how we can work better together to celebrate all we have done over the last six months. Now in the retreat planning form, I give you a couple options to choose from and you can fill and finish in that sentence with a few of those. An example may be the intention of this retreat is to step back, reflect on how things have been going and talk about how we can work better together as a team. And once you've done that, you finish step two and you have the intention for the retreat that you're planning. Step three is mapping out the basic agenda and flow for your retreat. Now for me, an engaging retreat has some core components to it. And I'm going to go through each one of those here. And then, like I said, in the form, you'll be able to map out each one of these. And so you can fill them right in for you. Now, one is the warm welcome. As we're joining, we want people to feel at ease as they come into our retreat, as we're going to be having an open discussion. So I like to start with some welcome questions. A couple of my favorites that I like to use is what's one thing that you learned about yourself recently? Or if you could click a button and one thing on your to-do list would automatically be completed, what would it be and why? But pick your own questions. And if you go to my book, you'll find, I think, 30 to 40 different welcome questions that you can incorporate into your retreat and into other future meetings as well to make them more engaging. So you spend maybe 10 minutes on that warm welcome as people are adjusting into the meeting. Now, after everyone is there and people have answered the question, you're going to shift on to part two, which is your introduction and setting the context. Now, when you're, all you're doing here is you're going to read the intention that you actually wrote earlier in your preparation that you may have sent out to people before and said, Hey, the intention of our meeting is to do 
X, and you're gonna read the intention. Now that you've shared the intention, it's a good idea to make more time for connection before content by playing a couple games. Now, if you're looking for ideas, you can check out my video here on YouTube, five brand new virtual games. You can check out my articles in Harvard Business Review in Forbes for more ideas, or get my book, 75 Team Activation Remote Teams, where you'll get activities you can use in this retreat and future retreats as well. So play maybe one, maybe maximum two quick games, five minutes each to just get people laughing and connecting before you jump into your discussion. Now on to the core discussion part of your program. You're gonna wanna pick three, maximum five questions to form the basis of your team discussion. And you're gonna wanna pick questions that are gonna help you fulfill on the intention you set. Now, if your intention was to talk about how to work better together as a team, three questions that I often use is, one, what do we do really well together as a team? Question two, what do we not do as well as we'd like to? And question three, what are a few ideas that we could do to improve performance as a team or something of that nature? Now, those will form the basis of your discussion. Prior to starting your discussion, you're gonna wanna set some just basic ground rules. A few that I like to use are, nobody speaks for more than one minute at a time, and you can have a set of scissors there to have people cut when when their one minute is up. Another one is, before you speak again, make sure that everyone has spoken prior. And then the third one is, always speak from your own opinion, not for everybody at once. And you can also invite your people to say, hey, are there any other ground rules you like to set? But if you're only there for a couple hours, those will often suffice. Now, you're gonna always wanna make sure you build in at least 10 minutes at the end of the retreat for reflection and follow-up. I will often let people know at the beginning of the retreat that I'm gonna pause us wherever we are 10 minutes before we finish so we can have time to reflect and commit to follow-up actions. You may wanna set an alarm as a facilitator for 10 minutes before you finish or ask somebody on your team to set an alarm themselves so they can remind you so you can transition to this important part of the retreat. Now, for the reflection process, you may want to pose a couple questions and have people reflect on them individually, and then they can share their comments in the chat, or you can pick a couple people to share. You can ask people, what was this experience like for you? What are you taking away from today? What did you learn today? Or what follow-up actions do you feel we need to take based on this conversation? Now, many times there's discussions that didn't get finished. Many times there are discussions that need to happen between two people in the group and not everybody. So ask people to commit to follow-up actions. What needs to happen? Who's gonna be responsible for it? And by when are we gonna make those things happen? Have people jot those down in the chat and maybe have one person capture all the different follow-up actions that you're committing to before you finish up. And then the last step of your retreat process is always making sure you have time for gratitude before goodbye. You, as a leader, as a facilitator of the retreat, thank everybody for their participation, for their openness, for their sharing, for their fun and laughter, and thank you for engaging in the process to work better together as a team. So make sure you build all of those different components into your retreat planning process, and if you do, I guarantee running a retreat won't be as hard as you think, and it's gonna make a world of difference for both you and your team. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click like and subscribe below and share this video with at least one other person who you think will make a difference for. If you're looking for that retreat planning form that I'm talking about, you'll find a link to download it in the video description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section below or reach out to me for additional resources and support at beyondthankyou.com. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and for being a leader who cares enough to do something to connect and celebrate with her people. Once again, I'm Chris Littlefield from Beyond Thank You. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected.